<laughs> he'll leave here and it's like whoa <laughs> and you look and he's going like fucking five miles per hour god well the back of our travel all project here needs a floor and that's what we're gonna start working on today we're gonna have to build a little frame um to be able to put the sheet metal on we're not going to replace it with plywood how it came from the factory so let's get started well this back floor was plywood from the factory and there's a nice little area where it would sit down in so we don't want to just put sheet metal in there because obviously it'd leave a big lip back here so it'd be nice to have a break where we could break that whole length with a nice sharp edge but i don't have one so i started looking at what I do have and I took a piece of square tubing and I cut it where each corner rounded uh, opposing corners and if you take that then you can set it down in there and see that kind of fits up real nice so I think we can make something like that work so this is one by one 11 gauge uh, this piece is 67 inches long. That's how long the frame is in there. I put blue tape on it to help me keep a straight line. But this is going to be no fun. Basically going to take a cut off wheel. Run it down the side of the blue tape. Cut this side. Flip it over. Do that side. This is going to suck. How much will it warp? All of it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we can force that back. It's got give in it. Good deal. That sucked, like I said. So, um, we'll hop inside of this thing now and clean us up some areas down along there and see if we can't get this tacked in. Luckily, this edge right here is rolled, so we'll be able to put uh, some tacks down in there and then probably come back with like our uh, cutoff wheel on the die grinder and smooth it out. Of course, we'll be able to weld it down on that edge, no problem, but that'll give us some weld at the top as well. Some weld as well. So I'm going to go down through here, clean off the end, and then probably go every foot or so and clean up some material where we can start uh, welding that piece in. Got the whole outside of the frame done. I didn't really want to show all that because all it was was splitting that tubing. Uh, like I said, kind of used the cutoff wheel and grind out those welds. That way the sheet metal can go up to the edge and weld that all the way around. So now we got outside frame. For the bars that are gonna run front to back, we'll do them out of square tubing as well and if you sit this down on here, you can see it's uh, it's probably only an eighth inch or so away from sitting flush. So I want to cut some of these to lengths, and then I'm going to go down through here and mark where these ribs are, and I'm going to grind out uh, little notches 
so it can kind of sit down and hug that it'll go give us a nice little area to weld and having the full piece of tubing on there will be nice and strong so that's the plan so i got that frame done yesterday and kind of having a hard time being out here just one of those days um so what i ended up getting done was getting one piece of that one by one it's just sat in place right now it's not even tacked in and those cross members are actually a little bit different heights down through there i'm not sure if they're warped or what but i had to notch them down through there to get that where it can sit flat so we're gonna have to do two more of those so i'm gonna pull that one out we'll take a closer look at it transfer the marks to two others and cut them down All right, so I got all this stuff tacked in. Uh, I still need to tack it up more down through here before I full weld it. There, there are some gaps to weld. That's from not trimming each one to kind of fit, just using this metal one as a base. But I'm really not too worried about it, like I said earlier. So I'm gonna hop in here and get this thing full welded up. I'm not gonna record all that. Um, it's gonna take a while. And when I get it done, I'll check in with you guys and talk about what we need to do next. I got that all welded up. Sir jumps a gap here because there, there were some pretty bad gaps back here. Uh, ground down the three welds on top, front and back. Luckily this is exactly four foot wide, so we just need to measure how long and we'll get a sheet of metal out and cut it to length and then probably start plotting bead rolls. Maybe if I shamelessly plug this off of her, she'll sell me that fucking car I've been trying to buy for two years. Let me kind of show what's going on here real quick. This took some figuring out. Obviously our one buy is going through here. So I want to stay a good inch and a half off of it so we don't have to worry about hitting it because I know that one buy is not true and perfectly square. We don't want our dies to hit it. So we're doing some math here. We figured out we can come off our edge, like right here, two and a half inches. And then off this center line, we'll come this way two and a half inches. These, we're gonna use our step die and they'll end up being one inch wide, one inch wide. And then if you're going this way also, two and a half inches, one inch wide. And when you get done like that, from inside to inside, five inches, inside to inside, five inches, all the way across, that way it'll end up symmetrical. So now that we figured out that number, uh, we're gonna clean up all this junk and plot these things out.
feel like if we pull this off, we can build a fucking spaceship. I know that's a far stretch. <laughs> you guys get the first ride. <laughs> Stiff. That's way better. Oh shit, that does look way better over here. Alright, so this end is pretty warped doing the oil cannon, as you can see. But if you like hold down that middle and then hold down where that line is, it'll actually sit flat and it just bows up a little bit in between there. And you can go down through there and do that. So Brandon drew us some lines on here. And we're gonna try shrinking in between these a little bit and try not to overwork it too much, but see if we can get this to sit a little flatter. It's looking pretty bitchin' actually. So we did a little more stretching on this and we came up a half inch from the back have us a line across here to follow and we're gonna try to get this thing clico down in see if we can't get it to actually suck down flat All right, well, I'll be honest, for this being such a big piece, and then it's actually a fairly simple project, it's just a large project, it's pretty hard to record. So, doing the square tubing frame, pretty straightforward, um, splitting that material. I just had one inch square tubing, it's what I had on hand. It's about an hour for me to go to my metal supply, so I just like to use what I have if I can find a way to make it work. So split that, do the outside frame, notch it around the cross members um, for our mid middle pieces, 
and weld that up. A very time consuming process, but it's pretty simple. Uh, this piece, cut it to length. It took a while to do the math to kind of figure out plotting out our lines here, but we decided how we wanted to do this and we bead rolled a step down, which is very similar to what come in the factory floor up there, like I did on the floor pans and everything else. So it kind of has a factory look to it, to me anyhow. So bead rolling it actually took like an hour and a half, believe it or not, with the hands I had here luckily to help me. If I would have tried to do this by myself, it would have been trashed. Um, but after bead rolling it, same thing. You're just going down doing all your lines we needed to shrink it. Luckily, Brandon knew that because I'll be honest, I wasn't sure what to do because I'm not a sheet metal guy. I done told you all that. Uh, but after shrinking the edges a couple times, it's got it where we can click it down in here. And it's still not perfect. There's a little, uh, it's a little wavy, but it's pretty good. So I'm happy with it. Wherever there's a Clico, we'll end up being a spot weld in the future. I need to get more Clicos for now. So thank you to Brandon and Bill for the help. Brandon for the knowledge. Y'all can give him a follow on Instagram if you want to follow his Model A build. It is Brandon underscore McGraw. You can find him on my followers if you're looking for him. Uh, and then just drilling a bunch of holes, which was measuring and drilling the holes for the Clicos. So like I said, a very time consuming process because it was large but nothing really complicated here. It turned out good, I'm happy with it. So thank you guys for coming and watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it, got an idea or maybe learned something. If you're new to the channel, please check out some of the other videos. If you always come back, thank you guys again for coming and watching my videos. If you wanna help the channel out, it's as simple as dropping a comment down below, liking, sharing, or subscribing. All those things help the channel grow, so I appreciate it when you guys do that. If you're on Instagram, I'm on there at Putin's Fab Shop. If you want to give me a follow, a follow. And I'll see you guys in the next video. But don't forget, sitting on your ass, finish your project. I'll see you guys next time.